Filmora. Yes, it's a video editing software, we know that, but it's got a few things that really set it apart from other editors like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. I decided to dive in and learn this software, and today I'm gonna share with you some of the things I like about it and some of the things that I don't like about it so that you can decide whether it's right for you. Let's begin. I'll touch briefly on the user interface, but I'm not gonna go super in depth here because it's not something that sets Filmora apart. It looks good, and for the most part, it's pretty similar to DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. It's almost like a mix between them because because everything is contained on one page and drop down menus like Premiere Pro, but the design, the UI, is a little bit more polished and intuitive like Resolve, which is great. These two things combined will make it really easy for beginners to learn how to edit on Filmora. Up on the top left, above the media library, you'll find some interesting tabs. These are unique to Filmora and one of the things that I like most about the software. While Resolve and Premiere have some built-in titles, transitions, and effects, Filmora has all of that, plus a built-in library of stock videos, photos, music, sound effects, effects, graphics, and templates. All of this is accessible right from your editing UI, so you don't have to jump between the software and the web and downloads and your files and then import it and, you know, it's, it's all just right there. Some of these assets are free with Filmora, but a lot of them are locked behind another paywall, which is a subscription to something called Filmora Assets. It's a whole other thing, I'll talk about that in a minute. If there's a little pink diamond on the upper corner of the asset, then this extra subscription is required to use it. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. Filmora itself has a relatively small collection of stock footage, so you might find what you need here, but they've also partnered with Pexels and Pixabay to integrate their free libraries of stock footage into the UI. And as for the quality, honestly, they're not the best shots in the world. Certainly nothing compared to Artgrid, but if you just need some basic stock footage, this is a fine way to go. All these videos are cleared for use on YouTube and social media, but they're not cleared for commercial projects. So if you're a video production company or a freelancer, you're gonna have to find your stock footage elsewhere. The stock photos are sort of the same deal, except the quality of these on Pexels is actually pretty darn good. Plus Filmora has a built-in AI photo generator so that you can create anything that your mind can think of. Well, at least that's the idea. It doesn't really work that well. It's nowhere near the quality of Midjourney, so I think we're just gonna have to hope in the future for an update to the AI for this thing, because it's, it's not really usable. The stickers tab is really what I've found to be most useful because it is filled with hundreds of really simple elements that will level up your editing instantly. The animated graphics combined with a stock background work perfectly to create amazing infographics without ever having to go into After Effects or spend hours searching and using assets from a different source. I'm not a huge fan of templates, but if you are and you like how simple they make everything, there are a lot of these on Filmora. I think they work best for gaming channels or businesses trying to put out a lot of polish content fast, like say a social post for a sale that they're putting on. All you have to do to use these is just drag the template onto your timeline, replace the stock assets with your own, and change the text. It's really that simple. This is by far the best implementation of templates I have ever seen. Now let's talk about audio because this is a big one. First, sound effects, because I like to start with the good stuff. The sound effects are definitely usable. For most editors, Filmora has all the stuff that you're gonna need. Whooshes, rises, uh, transitions. There's even some meme sound effects in there and having all of this stuff just right at your fingertips to be able to listen to it, drag it, and drop it into your timeline is really nice. Because at least for me, sound effects is very much trial and error. I'll download something, think it'll work, and then it won't work. So having that accessibility is awesome. Big fan, big fan. <laughs> the music, however, is a different story. A lot of it's pretty passable, especially the lo-fi stuff. That's pretty good. But the website says that there are over 100,000 songs here. I have no idea where they're getting that number because there is no way that that's true. Either that or there's no way to browse them all. There's an integrated AI music generator, which is barely worth mentioning because it just generates music from one genre prompt and a duration prompt. That's it, and I hate it. That's why I get all of my music from Epidemic Sound, who also happens to think it'd be a great fit for you, and I agree, so they're sponsoring this video. Epidemic has over 40,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects to choose from, and they're all heavily curated, so they sound amazing. That's just my opinion, but you also don't have to take my word for it. You can try it out yourself because I have a link down in the description below that'll give you a free seven day subscription to the platform. One of the first 
things I did as a YouTuber or as an editor was to get Epidemic Sound because not only does it sound amazing and that's really important for the quality of your final video, but it also gives you the peace of mind that none of your videos are going to get copyright claimed, costing you the headache and loss of revenue of a demonetization. Their channel safelist and direct video clearing features are incredibly easy and quick to use, which gives me more time to be creative in my edits. And if there's one thing that I always recommend to creators to invest in right away to up the quality of their videos, it's good music. Again, link in the description below. It's totally free for a whole week. There's nothing to lose. You might as well see if you like it, and I think you will. AI music is anathema, we've established that. But AI can be really helpful in other ways, and to their credit, Filmora has been aggressively integrating this into their service. Some of these AI tools don't really work, and some of them work really well. AI thumbnail generation doesn't really work. Automatic, silence, removal, works, really, well. Text-based editing needs some work, usually it cuts off the end of the last word. There's a bunch of other useful things too, like AI speech enhancement and subtitle generation, but these are pretty standard in editing softwares. Resolve and Premiere both have these, so I'm not gonna go in depth here today. As for the AI stuff, it's only gonna get better over time, so I'm excited to see where this leads. But currently, I wouldn't say that many of the AI tools or even any of the AI tools in Filmora are really ready for professional use. And that's okay, because Filmora isn't geared toward professionals. A lot of these tools are neat, they save time, and they work really well for beginner to intermediate editors. But unfortunately, the software itself lacks the ability to handle larger professional workloads. For example, 4K C-Log3 footage from my Canon R6, which I never have any problems with in Resolve or Premiere Pro, was having issues playing back without a proxy in the timeline. And the color correction options are better than they used to be, but they're just, they're not ready for professional work. But none of this matters to most people. If you're a new editor or a YouTuber, this is actually a pretty good option for you. All the tools being built into the UI and a very easy to navigate and accessible way is amazing for beginner creators or YouTubers who aren't really doing insane edits. Plus having all those pre-built assets at your disposal is a great way to speed up your workflow and to improve the production quality of your videos overnight. So who is Filmora for? Beginner editors, businesses looking to produce their own promotional materials, and YouTubers, especially gaming channels or channels that produce um, like infographic explainer type videos. Basically, if you want or need access to a whole suite of tools all in one place and on a budget, Filmora is a great way to go. Not only is it a video editing software, it's also a screen recording software, and a very good one too. Obviously, this is a great feature for gamers, but if you're just a regular video editor, you might think that this is a superfluous feature. I'm here to tell you that it's not. The amount of screen recording I do to put together my videos is actually much higher than you would think. Mac has a built-in screen recorder, but it doesn't capture system audio, and Filmora does. This means instead of downloading movie clips or memes from sketchy sites and worrying about viruses, I can just record the screen with Filmora, play the video back, and boom, a meme. Are you serious? Now let's talk about that budget. Filmora does have a free version, which is uh, cool for checking out, I guess, to see if you like the software, but it's not really worth anything in the end because it'll export everything with a big old watermark on it. To get rid of that watermark and unlock a bunch of other stuff like creative assets and cloud storage, you have three options. The quarterly plan, which costs $29.99 per quarter, which would amount to $120 for a year. The annual plan, which right now is $49.99 for the whole year up front. Or the perpetual plan, which gives you access to Filmora forever, but only the version of Filmora that you buy. So in this case, early 2024, that would be Filmora 13. You can use Filmora 13 forever till the end of time, but if Filmora 14 comes out, you have to pay to upgrade to Filmora 14. This perpetual plan and also limits your AI credits, which are sort of the tokens that you use to use the AI in the system. It limits that to 2,000. So if you run out, you're gonna have to buy more. Both the quarterly and annual plan give you cross-platform access, meaning you can edit on Mac, PC, iOS, PadOS, and Android. While the perpetual plan limits you to use Filmora on the platform, the operating software that you purchased it for. So in my case, that would be Mac. My personal recommendation is to go for the 
annual plan because it certainly is the best value. Though if you want to give it a shot for three months first, maybe go for the quarterly plan, see if you like editing with Filmora, and then if you do, you can upgrade to the annual plan after having started off with a smaller investment. The Filmora Creative Asset subscription is a whole different animal. It costs $100 a year, $40 a quarter, or $21 per month. That's not cheap. Whether it's worth it for you is totally up to your needs and your budget. Now I want to know what do you think of Filmora. If you're not really sure, you should check out this video where I compare the giants of video editing software, Resolve and Premiere Pro, and I look at them from a beginner editor's perspective. Check that out.